Hey, I'm glad you could join me. It's Good Friday, and I would like to share some good news with you. And boy, do we need it. It's, um, we have so much bad news today, but you know, today we are reminded again, and each year we're reminded that God loved this world so much that he gave his only son. And Jesus came into the world as the Lamb of God. You know, my um, stepdad uh, was a shepherd and he, he kept sheep um, on the farm. I lived on the farm for part of my life and I lived in the city for part of my life. And uh, we got used to all the animals and my stepdad was uh, a good shepherd and uh, he used to have a lot of sheep on the farm. And every year around this time, the barn would just be jumping with uh, little lambs uh, jumping around and it was uh, a time of year that uh, we were reminded about sheep and shepherds and little lambs and of course there was a butcher who used to visit our farm uh, right later on in the year as they grew and fattened up a bit and he would come and butcher a couple and take them away and it was such a vivid reminder of this great truth that Jesus is the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Well, I'd like to share a few thoughts with you about the Lord Jesus on this Good Friday. And it's from the Gospel of John. I'm just going to read to you a few verses. If you have your Bible, you can turn to John chapter 18, and I'll be reading verses 1 to 9. And this is what it said. This is what it says. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. And then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. And then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke, of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. <clears throat> there are three things that I want to uh, point out to you here in this passage that, uh, that speak to us so much about the wonder of the person of Christ. And as he approached the cross, and as the shadow of the cross loomed larger and larger, uh, it got darker and darker. And he's there in the Garden of Gethsemane and Judas is coming. And this is the moment where he is betrayed and arrested. And the first thing that I love so much about this uh, part of the gospel is the courage of Jesus. Think about it. They are coming to betray him and to arrest him. And the Bible says that Jesus knew all things that were to come upon him. Now think about what this would be like for you if you knew everything that was going to happen to you. I, I imagine we wouldn't be, even be able to bear it. And yet it, when it, it, it says that he knew all things, the arrest, the judgment, the rejection, the scourging, the beatings, the crucifixion, the abandonment, the judgment of God, knowing all things, what does it say? It says he went forward. He did not shrink away. He did not turn away. It says that he went forward. And it just speaks of the courage of Jesus to go forward and to finish the work which his father had given him to do. It's truly a remarkable thing. The courage of Jesus here, he went forward. And then the next thing that strikes us here is the identity of Jesus. And here Jesus reveals uh, in, a, in a moment, uh, who he really is. They come and he asks them, 
who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. They were just looking for a man, uh, a, a, a carpenter, a teacher, and he's there with a few fishermen. And what is the answer that they get? Jesus says to them, I am he. Now you'll notice that the little word he here is in italics. And that means that the translators have, have um, supplied that for um, clarity. Um, it's intended, but here I think it takes away from the meaning because if we just read this without the italic, the added word, it reads, Jesus said, I am. And the Bible says that the moment that he spoke these words, they fell backward to the ground. They could not stand before him. And you know, this, this is the word that John has been using all through his gospel. And it was unmistakable to them what Jesus was saying. He was taking to himself the divine name. This was the most special name for God. It is the name by which he, God revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush. And you remember that there Moses had asked, Who, whom shall I say has sent me when he was to go to the children of Israel in Egypt? And God said to him, you tell them that I am hath sent me. And he said, I am that I am. And it's based upon the word to be. We read it as Lord or Yahweh in the Old Testament. But there God revealed himself to Moses in a burning bush. And it was a vivid symbol uh, for God who burns like a fire in his righteousness and in his love and in his white hot holiness. And yet is not diminished. This burning bush would never burn up and it would remain undiminished. And you know, uh, John, you'll notice that he builds his gospel around these seven I am statements of Jesus. And it begins in chapter six, where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He says, if anybody's hungry, he says, let him come unto me. He says, I am the bread of life. And then in chapter eight, he says, I am the light of the world. Then in chapter 10, he says, I am the door. He says, I am the good shepherd, and so on. And there are seven of them. And they understood what he was saying because they actually, uh, when he talked about being the great I am, they, they wanted to stone him. And uh, that they, they could not uh, contemplate him, a mere man claiming to be God. And so here in a moment, he speaks this name, his name, and they're not able to stand before him. And so he reveals his true identity. And you know, we will all stand before him. Either we will bow before him as Savior and Lord, or we will, we will stand before him again as judge if we reject him. You know, it's interesting that there were many people in the gospel that fell down at Jesus' feet. But those who were his friends fell forward in worship and adoration. And it was his enemies that fell back. So this is just a remarkable part of the gospel where the Lord reveals himself as the great I am. And he is none other than God manifest in the flesh. So they couldn't stand before him. And so he asks again, who, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And so here's the third thing that, that uh, we see here in this part of the gospel, and that is the deep, deep love of Jesus. Here is the moment where he actually surrenders himself into their hands and gives himself as the sacrifice and uh, this is a remarkable part. He says, listen, if, take me and let these go their way. And so what he does is he gives himself in their place so that they can go free. And that's exactly what the gospel is. That is the message of the gospel. That is what Easter is all about. That Jesus came and took our place. That is substitution. That is the atonement. That is the way that God can now look upon us 
with mercy and forgive us because Jesus took our place. And that's a wonderful message. That is a, a wonderful message of hope for us sinners because that's what we are. Without God, without hope, we have no hope apart from his love. But this, this uh, account uh, highlights these things for us. And you know, um, I remember um, when I grew up on the farm, I grew up part of my life in the city and I grew up part of my life on the farm and my stepdad was a, a shepherd. And he, he always had animals on the farm, horses and cows and pigs and chickens all over the place. But he also had uh, sheep for a good while, many sheep. And about this time of year, the barn was always uh, teeming with uh, lambs jumping all over the place. And it was just a uh, lambing season every year was a time of, of uh, new life. And <clears throat> of course, uh, there were accidents and invariably every year when you have a hundred sheep giving birth to all of these lambs uh, sometimes there's mishaps and one year uh, it happened just the same way as an ancient story of the 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 Middle Eastern shepherds and how they would have to uh, care for their sheep and for their lambs and this one year I remember the, uh, one of the the ewes had given birth to her lamb and it had died and so uh, the, the the lamb had died and the poor sheep was left without a lamb to take care of um, she had she had lain on it or something in the in the night and 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 suffocated it and it died and there was another you and she gave birth to um, her lamb but in the process of giving birth this sheep had uh, something had happened and she, the, the sheep had actually died in the process of giving birth. And so you, you had a little lamb that now was orphaned and it didn't have a mother to take care of it. So you had a dead lamb and a sheep that had no lamb to take care of. And then you had a, a dead sheep, but you had a living lamb that was now orphaned. And it is remarkable what happened. Um, now, you would think that you could just take the, the living lamb and give it to the other sheep and she could adopt it. But uh, sheep are very particular about their own and it has to go by smell. And they, uh, he tried to give the sheep to this, or this lamb to the sheep to see if she would take it and accept it. But, it. but she wouldn't. And she stomped her feet and they probably would have killed it because she smelled it. And it wasn't her own, and she rejected it outright. Well, my stepdad um, took part of the afterbirth and just covered that little lamb with the afterbirth. And the, the ancient legend says that the, the shepherd would take the, the skin of the dead lamb and actually wrap it around the living lamb and then present it to the sheep to be adopted. And this is exactly what happened. And uh, my stepdad took the living lamb and just covered it in the, the, the afterbirth of, the, of the, the, the lamb, the sheep that had died and in its own afterbirth and brought it to the sheep. And actually she took it. And the, the, the dead lamb became the covering for the living lamb so that it might be adopted. And you know, my friends, that is a picture of what God has done at Calvary. That is a picture of what God has done in Christ. That is the gospel. Because th this, is, this is what happens when we come to understand the gospel and we, we, we confess to the Lord and we say that I'm a sinner, that I deserve to go to hell. I have broken God's laws. I, I'm, I'm undone. And I need God's grace and I need his forgiveness and I cry out to God. And you know what happens? There's an exchange that takes place. And at Calvary, Jesus took all of my sin, not only my sins, but my sin. And he became the sacrifice. He became the substitute. And he died as if he were me. And then I receive his righteousness and God gives his perfect life to me. And it becomes a covering a garment of salvation. 
And that's why I'm accepted before God, because I have been clothed in the righteousness, the pure, white, holy righteousness of Christ. That's a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's what the Bible says. And so when God looks at me, he doesn't really see me. He sees Christ and then he sees me. And in him, I'm accepted and I am free. So my friend, I trust that on this Good Friday, you will be reminded of Jesus and just how wonderful he is. He went with courage and he went forward for me and for you. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of God. He went forward and he finished that work. He is the great I am. He is, the, he is God manifest in the flesh. And we need to come to grips with understanding who he really is. And then wonder of wonders that I could come a sinner, condemned, unclean, and he would take me and make me his very own because of what Jesus did. So, my friend, won't you, won't you invite him into your life today? Maybe this Easter would be the time that you would trust the Lord as your own Savior and Lord. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you these few thoughts. Look to the Lord, search it out in God's word, and may God bless you. Amen.